What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Through the Mail Thursdays. Uh, today I'm going to do something a little bit unique that I typically don't do on my channel. I'm going to do a shout out. Uh, I just want to say that uh, this video is dedicated to a very, very important person to me on the uh, YouTube family. Uh, her name is Lisa. Uh, Lisa, to no avail, comes to my channel every week, every episode, every video that I ever post. Lisa is there commenting. So I just want you to check out Lisa's YouTube page. Uh, it's going to be linked down here at the bottom. Lisa is a big Detroit Tigers fan. Uh, when I uh, told her that I got Pat Underwood to do a shout out for me, she just was so excited with that response that I thought, you know what? I think Lisa needs to have some more viewers on her channel. So if you get a chance, check out Lisa's channel. She likes to collect Miguel Cabrera. Uh, she gets very excited when she gets Miguel Cabrera stuff, a pack or whatever. Uh, so Lisa, this episode's for you. Detroit Tiger returns on Through the Mail Thursdays because you're such a loyal viewer of mine. And I appreciate you coming in every week after week viewing my content. So we're going to jump into this first one. This postmark from California and it is a return from former Detroit Tigers pitcher Kurt Knudsen or Nudsen. I don't know how to say that. I've heard it pronounced both ways, Knudsen and Nudsen. So feel free to correct me down below. We'll just call him Kurt from here forward so I don't offend him. Uh, but uh, Kurt signed four or four cards from me, but most importantly, he signed that 92 Donners, the rookies, which I'm slowly but surely trying to put that set together. I just uh, need a couple two big key cards out of that set signed Manny Ramirez and Pedro Martinez. But hey, I'm going to get as close as I can, the best that I can. So let me tell you about Kurt Knudsen or Knudsen and his career in Major League Baseball. Kurt was originally drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates in the eighth round in the 1987 draft, but chose not to sign and instead was drafted in the ninth round after transferring to the University of Miami in Coral Gables, Florida. After signing his pro career contract out of Miami, he was assigned to the rookie ball affiliate of the Tigers in 1988, where he finished the year being promoted to single A, where he combined for 21 appearances posting a 1.14 ERA for the Tigers minor league affiliates. The following year, he was promoted to A ball, where he appeared in 45 games, posting a 2.15 ERA as a reliever. The following year, he got a promotion up to double A after starting the year out in single A, where he put a 7-1 win-loss record on the chart in 29 games and also started 8 that year for them as well with a 2.23 RA. In 1991, it would be a promotion from double A to triple A, where he would split the season, appearing in 46 games for the Tigers double A AA and triple A affiliates. And in 1992, he would start the season out with the Tigers triple A affiliate, but on May 16, 1992, Kurt Knudsen, Knudsen will get his call up to the major leagues. He would appear in 48 games that year for the Detroit Tigers major league team, posting a 2-3 record with a 4-5-8 ERA his rookie season. Well, in 1993, he would split time between Detroit and AAA, where he would appear in 30 games for the Tigers in Detroit and 23 games for their AAA affiliate. The following year in 1994, he would, again, spend the majority of the season in AAA, where he would appear in 37 games, starting seven of them, for, for the Tigers AAA affiliate, posting a 2-5 and five record, and he would only make four appearances in the strike-shortened 1994 season for the Tigers that year. I think this is another example of one of those players that, uh, because of the strike-shortened season, he basically lost his job. After the strike concluded in 1994, the Tigers did not renew his contract, and Kurt signed with the San Francisco Giants. Uh, unfortunately, uh, with the Giants, he did not get a call up to the major leagues as he struggled a little bit in their AAA affiliate appearing in 11 games. 
Well, in 1996, I'm assuming an injury must have held him out for the year because he did not pitch in 1996, at least in the United States. And in 1997, at 30 years old, he signed a minor league deal with the Anaheim Angels. Well, he was a workhorse, to say the least, for the Angels that year in their minor league system, appearing in 42 games. But his record dipped to 1-6 in six that year in an ERA above 8. At 30 years old, Kurt retired from baseball as a player and um, I would assume returned to California. <laughs> you know, that's where, where it's postmarked from, Sacramento, California, and returned to California and found his second career in life. But uh, very, very happy to add Kurt Knudsen or Knudsen to the collection. Uh, glad to get one more closer to getting this 92 Donners the Rookie set signed. So we'll move on to the next one. All right, so this next one's postmark from Phoenix, Arizona. And I actually have a real, real nice return here because you know how I really enjoy my, uh, my senior league cards. And there's a return from a former Detroit Tiger slash senior league player, Ricky Peters, on one. Arizona State University card on two. A 1982 Donneris. Signed right above his facsimile signature. You can almost, it's almost hard to tell which one's the real one and which one's not. And finally, a 1981 Tops signed as well. And I actually had a fifth card, and I don't remember if I sent that or if he threw it in the, the pile, but he actually signed five of five for me. And uh, the uniqueness about Ricky's autograph is he puts a little star above his eye and his name there. He didn't do it on this one. He put it above the Peters there, but you can see the little star that he makes on his cards there. So let me tell you about Ricky Peters, about his career in baseball. So Peters, a California native, actually was originally drafted in the 18th round from his high school in California in 1973 by the Twins, but he chose not to go there and instead enrolled at Arizona State University. Well, even at Arizona State University, he was drafted again by the Braves in 76, but he chose not to sign with them and again return for his uh, final season in 1977 with Arizona State, which would turn out to be a really good move, and I'll tell you why here in a second. So the switch hitting center fielder for Arizona State University chose to return instead of turning pro because... In 1977, Arizona State University won college baseball's national title. And after winning the national title, the Detroit Tigers would select Peters in the seventh round of the 1977 draft. Well, Peters would show promise as after he signed, at 21 years old, he was assigned to the Tigers' double A affiliate. He responded batting 306 and stealing nine bases in 38 games in his limited time that year. Well, that garnered him a promotion to AAA where he would appear in 135 games the next season, batting 276 and stealing 25 bases for the Tigers AAA affiliate. Well, in 1979, he would again start the year um, primarily in AAA, appearing in 107 games and batting 320 and stealing 30 bases, which would garner him a call-up on September 8, 1979, with the Detroit Tigers towards the end of the season. He would appear in 12 games that year for the Tigers, batting a respectable 263 in his first year called up to the majors. Well, in 1980, that was his first full year in the majors, and he would actually pretty put solid numbers up, batting 291 and stealing 13 bases as a switch hitter for the Tigers outfield, appearing in 133 games. Well, despite this strong showing in 1980, he was delegated to just 63 games for the Tigers in 81, and would bat 256 while doing so for the Tigers that year. I'm not really sure what happened in 1982. There is actually a blank for the 1982 season. So I can't come to the conclusion that, you know, he was injured or if he had some other issue, a personal issue, I don't know. But in 1982, Ricky did not play at all 
for the Detroit Tigers and any of their affiliates, and after the conclusion of the 82 season, he was actually released from his contract. Well, he signed with the Oakland A's, and he split time between their AAA affiliate, where he posted a 297 batting average, and got called up to the majors for the A's, where he appeared in 55 games that year, also batting a respectable 287 in 1983. Well, despite this strong showing, he was sent back down in 1984 to AAA, where he appeared in 74 games and posted a 327 batting average, not to be called back up again. In 1985, despite the strong showing in AAA, he again would just appear in 126 games, batting 296 for the A's AAA affiliate. Again, no call up in 85. Well, in 86, he would get a call up, and he would stick in the majors for 44 games. And then, after struggling uh, mightily at the major league level in 86, the A's relieved him of his contract on July 27, 1986. Well, after his major league playing career, Peters would resurface as a coach uh, for the Houston Astros organization, uh, he would be a roving coach, and he would also coach in short season rookie ball, but he obviously would show up in the senior league as well. So he played in the senior league. Now, after he finished up his baseball career, whether it was a coach at or as a player, uh, he actually retired to Arizona and actually worked in a parks and recreation department for a municipal parks and rec department. Uh, after his baseball career. So I would assume that he's probably close to retirement or you know, has already recently retired from his parks and rec job, uh, which he basically obtained in the mid-1990s. So very happy to add Mr. Peters to the collection as I'd never gotten him before. Very cool to get this Arizona State University card sign and another senior league card for the collection. So we'll move on to the last one. All right, so this final one is postmarked from Missouri, and it is former Detroit Tigers pitcher Dave Tobik on his rookie card from 1980, or 79, excuse me, his 1980 card, his 81 card, and his 82 card. So we've almost done these in chronological order here, 79, 80, 81, 82. So let me tell you about Dave Tobik and his career in baseball. So Tobik was originally drafted by the Montreal Expos in the third round of the 74 draft out of Ohio University. He chose not to sign and instead stayed another year at Ohio and the Detroit Tigers signed him in the first round of the second dairy phase of the draft in 1975. Well, after signing as a professional, he was assigned to the Tiger single A affiliate, where he would split the seasons between single A and double A, posting a seven wins and 13 loss record, starting 22 of 25 games for them in 1975. Well, in 1976, he would repeat the same journey, uh, splitting time between two teams in single A and double A, this time would post a 7-win, 6-loss record and a 2.66 ERA. Well, the following year in 77, he would start out in AA but be promoted to AAA and finish the year with an 8-5 and record with 2.82 as his ERA in 40 appearances. Well, in 1979, he again would start in AAA and he would post a 5-4 and record in 33 games with a 3.42 ERA. Well, on August 26, 1978, Dave got the call to the major leagues with the Detroit Tigers, and he appeared in five games, finishing out the year with the Tigers, posting a 3.75 ERA in those five appearances. Well, he was sent back down to the minor leagues um, in uh, split in time in 1979 between the two, but he posted a sparkling ERA of just .47 in triple A, but in the majors, his record was 3-5 and five with a 4.33 ERA. Well, in 1980, it would be very similar to 1979, where he would split time between triple A and double A, uh, between Detroit and their triple A affiliate. Well, in 1981, he would be a full member, uh, full-time, for the pitching staff of the Detroit Tigers, appearing in 27 games as a reliever, 
posting a 2-2 record with a 2.69 ERA, which was the best of his career at this point. In 1982, he would follow that up in 51 appearances with a 4-9 record with a 3.56 ERA. Well, after the successful 82 season, the Detroit Tigers decided to trade him right before the 1983 season to the Texas Rangers for Johnny Grubb. So this is how Johnny Grubb became an integral part of the Detroit Tigers, which eventually would go on to win the World Series the following year. While well, with the Texas Rangers, he actually posted a 2-1 record in 27 appearances with a 3.68 ERA that year for, for the Rangers. In 1984, he would follow that up with uh, 24 appearances with a 3.61 ERA, but his record would drop down to 1-6. Well, after the 84 season, the uh, Rangers would not re-sign him, and he would sign with the Seattle Mariners. Well, the Mariners assigned him to AAA, and actually he had a superb year in AAA, where he posted a 12-win, 6-loss record in 56 appearances with Seattle's AAA affiliate. But his ERA kind of ballooned up above 5, and when he got called up to the majors with the Mariners in just 8 games, his ERA was at 6 that year. So after the 85 season concluded, the Mariners did not renew his contract, and uh, he was declared a free agent. Well, after he retired from baseball as a player, he actually uh, had a son, and his son was named Dan Tobik, and he played for the University of Tennessee at Martin. Dan also eventually would get drafted and play minor league baseball for the Los Angeles Angels organization. So very, very happy to add Dave Tobik to the collection. I think I've seen other people getting Dave Stegman and Kip Young to sign that card. So I'm definitely going to see if I can find, you know, track those two guys down and see if I got a couple more copies of this card. And maybe this will be another one of those uh, 79 tops you see me get completely signed. I certainly hope so, at least. So I want to thank Mr. Tobik for signing. I want to thank Ricky Peters for signing all his Detroit cards as well as his Senior League card as well. I want to thank Kurt Knudsen or Knudsen. Again, like I said, I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong for signing that 92 Donners the Rookies for me. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch another episode of Remember the Great Sports. As I mentioned before, definitely check out Lisa's channel below. And this is for you, Lisa. I hope this brings a smile to your face. And as always, to everyone, happy collecting. <laughs>